what makes a miracle? Ultimately, you decide. Any unexplainable event that piques your curiosity and inspires your awe may be miraculous to you if you believe that a supernatural realm exists. The top definition of miracle in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary is an extraordinary event manifesting divine intervention in human affairs. Skeptics say that miracles may not happen because God may not exist, or if God exists, he may not intervene in people's lives. But believers say that miracles happen constantly as God works in the world. People throughout history have reported experiencing many different types of miracles, and each person's individual perspective on an event determines whether or not they consider it a miracle. Miracle stories abound among people of faith, and they seem to fall into two main categories. Dramatic events, events like a terminal cancer patient's spontaneous remission, or a religious figure's apparition, may capture your attention as miracles. Dramatic occurrences, such as an earthquake victim who's rescued after many days underneath rubble, often are touted as miracles in the news. Quiet yet unexplainable events. You may also consider quiet yet unexplainable events to be miraculous. For example, figuring out how to solve an urgent problem after praying for guidance, or meeting your future spouse and somehow knowing that you're meant to be together may be miracles in your life. What can be called a miracle is exactly what happened to Adams. They were a small family who were taking their very first steps in life. The mother, Samantha, and the father, John, took their newborn child to the church for the first time, and there the miracle happened. John and Samantha were very religious people. They even saw each other for the first time in the church. Samantha was volunteering in the church that used to go with his family every Sunday. They were meeting there every weekend and got to talk a little before John took his parents to home. John's mother was the first one to notice that her son was very interested in this beautiful girl who was greeting them every Sunday on the church's door. She tried to surprise both of them by inviting her over for dinner without telling John. John's mother told Samantha that John would like to invite her over for dinner next Sunday, but he was so embarrassed to tell her himself, and that's why he asked his mother to do so. Samantha accepted the invitation. However, it was weird for her that an adult man like John used his mother to invite her for dinner. John's mother plan actually worked that day. For the first time, Samantha and John had the chance to speak freely without being worried about leaving as soon as possible. Samantha said what his mother did and how she invited her on his behalf. John laughed and told Samantha that his mother always was asking him to marry a religious girl, someone who's committed to going to church every Sunday. Samantha thought that John was funny and handsome. She also liked his parents, who were very nice to her. Samantha was the daughter of the bishop of the same church that John's family goes to. The bishop was a good friend of John's family, and especially to his father, because they went together to the school a long time ago. The two families were very happy when they knew that their children wanted to be together. They were even happier than the couple themselves. John and Samantha truly loved each other, and they formed a very cute couple. After marriage, John started to volunteer in church with his wife, beside his work in the school every day. Samantha didn't have a job other than volunteering in church on the weekend. Samantha was staying at home every day, waiting for her husband to get back from work. John and Samantha had a very nice life, and they loved their house so much. They wanted to have their own family, and they thought that they were one step behind that. The couple started to try to have a baby. It wasn't an easy trip for them. First of all, they had problems getting Samantha pregnant and took a long journey in different hospitals and clinics to get her pregnant. But for Samantha, she always believed that science had anything to do with her pregnancy. She believed that her prayers were the reason behind her pregnancy. John didn't care about Samantha's point of view. He didn't care how his wife got pregnant at all. He was just happy to know that his wife was finally pregnant. John couldn't believe himself. He couldn't believe that he would be a father after all that weight. After nine months, Samantha gave birth to a very beautiful baby who looked exactly like his father. They decided to name the kid Matthew after his grandfather, the bishop. Matthew was a very lovely baby, and his grandparents really loved him. Matthew had a lot of people to take care of him and spoil him. Once she delivered her baby, Samantha started to talk to her husband about baptism. John was a Christian man who was going to the church every Sunday, but that was all. Unlike his wife, John wasn't interested in reading the Bible in his free time or watching the religious channels on TV. Going to the church and being a good person was enough for him to be a good Christian. That's why, like so many Americans, he didn't know a lot about baptism, and Samantha had to explain it to him. 
Samantha told him that in order to understand the reason for being water baptized, is it's important to carefully consider what the Bible says about it. Jesus himself was baptized. He was not a sinner, yet he humbled himself in obedience to identify with us and give us an example to follow. At this time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in Jordan. The moment he came out of the water, he saw the sky split open and God's spirit, looking like a dove, came down on him. Along with the spirit, a voice. You are my son, chosen and marked by my love, pride of my life. Mark 1, 9. Samantha continued explaining to her husband, saying, Baptism is a symbol of Christ's burial and resurrection. Our entrance into the water during baptism identifies us with Christ's death on the cross, his burial in the tomb, and his resurrection from the dead. It's a symbol of your new life as a Christian. We bury the old life, and we rise to walk in a new life. Baptism is like a wedding ring. It's the outward symbol of the commitment you made in your heart, a commitment that has to be followed through and lived out on a daily basis. John didn't have a problem with having his son baptized, but he was worried about the little baby. John was scared that his baby might get hurt in the process. That's why he asked his wife if there was any other way to baptize Matthew without using water because he's seen some videos on the internet before for little babies, like Matthew, getting hurt during the baptism. But Samantha told him that they had to use the water, saying, as per the example of Jesus, by being immersed in water, the word baptize comes from the Greek word baptis, which means to immerse or dip underwater. Every baptism in the Bible was by immersion underwater. The book of Acts shows us that this was the norm for every believer. John made himself clear to his wife, saying, I don't have this information like you have, and I don't spend time reading Bible like you do, but I think that Matthew's still too young to be baptized, and I believe in baptizing children when they're old enough to understand what it means and make a personal declaration of belief. Samantha disagreed with her husband. From her point of view, the one requirement for baptism is belief in Christ, and she was sure that her son will be a good Christian just like his parents and his grandparents. After a long conversation, Samantha could convince her husband to baptize Matthew as soon as possible. Samantha called her father and set up the nearest appointment available to baptize Matthew. The couple took their beloved baby and went to church in order to baptize him. Samantha was so happy while she was waiting in the waiting room, and she didn't know that a disaster was about to happen. While being baptized, Matthew got some water in his little lung, and he suddenly stopped breathing. The parents couldn't believe that their little one was dying in front of their own eyes, and they couldn't do anything to help him. John and Samantha went crazy by what happened. In just a few moments, their son moved from the baptism section to the frenal section. It was like life ended for them. John was looking at his wife, wanting to say, I told you so, but his look was enough. So he decided not to say anything. Samantha couldn't stop crying and she almost passed away a few times. John went to say goodbye to his son in the coffin, but then the true miracle happened. John heard something when he was close to his son's body. He approached Matthew to find out that the baby was still breathing. John screamed when he heard his baby's breath and called for help. Matthew was transferred to the hospital right away, and there he received the needed medical care to save his life. In the hospital, the parents were told that their son never really died. Matthew just lost his breath for a few moments, and luckily for him, that didn't damage his health. Samantha and John are still living happy with their son, Matthew. They still go to church every Sunday, and above all, they still believe that Matthew didn't just get lucky that day at the church, but what happened there was a true miracle. Well, friends, that's the end of this incredible story. We hope, as always, that it's been to your liking. If you liked it, give us a like, leave us your valuable comment, share on your social networks, subscribe to our channel, and activate the notification bell so that you're always notified when we have a new video. And in this way, you don't miss any of our stories. For now, we only have to invite you to join us in the next one.